Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are building a complete backend for our Mern Task Manager app without writing endless boilerplate. With Node.js, Express, MongoDB, and ChatGPT as our coding assistant, you'll see how to go from an empty folder to a fully working API that you can test in minutes. By the end, you'll have a clean crude endpoints, modular project structure, and a confidence to adopt it for your own apps. Let's jump in and get your backend running. Before we proceed with our actual app, note we are using the Mern stack, which requires installation of Node.js and MongoDB. And of course, we would be seeking help of ChatGPT to set up our machine. You need at minimum of Node.js, MongoDB, and Visual Studio Code as optional coding environment. I have all these installations on my machine, so won't be going over the installation part, but you would get good step-by-step -step instructions from ChatGPT like the prompt here. So while the response appears, for our beginner developers, let me introduce the tools we would be installing. Node.js is a runtime environment that allows you to run JavaScript code outside of a web browser. Traditionally, JavaScript was used only for web pages, but with Node.js, you can use it to build server-side applications such as APIs, backend services, and even real-time applications. It's fast, lightweight, and powered by Google's V8 JavaScript engine. MongoDB is a NoSQL database used to store data in a flexible JSON-like text format called Documents. And don't worry if you didn't get the NoSQL or JSON part, you would as we code ahead. Unlike traditional databases that store data in tables and rows, MongoDB stores data as objects, making it ideal for applications where data structures may change over time. It's fast, scalable, and well-suited for modern web and mobile apps. Note during installation, recommendation from me is to select the S service option, which starts MongoDB at computer startup, so it is always available when you need it. Visual Studio Code is a lightweight code editor with a huge add-on or extension ecosystem. It's a free software from Microsoft and is a web developer's best friend. We have videos on its setup already on our channel, which you can look up. Git, Postman, and Nodemon are good suggestions, but I would be skipping going over these in interest of time, but I definitely suggest you query chat GPT about these as they are excellent tools every web developer, especially a full stack one, must be familiar with. Now that our prerequisites are set up, let's proceed by setting up the backend. We'll use Node.js with Express to create our server. Express.js is a minimal and flexible web application framework for Node.js designed to simplify the process of building robust and scalable web applications and APIs. Let's seek help of ChatGPT to set up our backend project. Note we'll nudge it to use the folder structure we came up with in our last video of this series. To do that, we'll be using the prompt you're seeing on the screen. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's create a top level folder for our project and a subfolder for our backend. Inside, we are going to do the initialization for our node project and install the necessary dependencies for our API server. Perfect. We have created a new folder, initialized a Node.js project, and installed the necessary dependencies Express per, for our server, Mongoose to interact with MongoDB course to handle cross-origin requests, and .env for environment variables. Now let's use ChatGPT to generate the boilerplate code for our Express server. Let's open Visual Studio Code. Rename the file to server.js to maintain consistent terminology throughout this series. Create the server.js file in the main folder and paste the code that was generated by ChatGPT. All right, everything looks good. We have uh, our server ready with the task endpoint, which should return this task root working. So let's kick it off and see if it works. So I'm gonna bring up the terminal and type node server.js to start our server. And immediately something went wrong, Mongo URI not defined. So if we look in the code, Mongo URI environment variable is required for our MongoDB connection, and this is where it's failing. 
So we need to define this environment variable for sure, but uh, let's seek help of ChatGPT to figure out what its value should be. So I'm going to say getting error with MongoDB local installation. All right, so it's suggesting us to create the env file and add the following line to the env file our database name uh, database is not configured yet but we are going to use this your database name as a dummy placeholder just uh, since we are just trying to check if our server endpoint works so i'm going to create a env file which should create our environment variables define the environment variable and retry Perfect, it worked this time. Server is running on port 5000, MongoDB connected successfully, perfect. So in our server.js file, we have this slash task endpoint, which should return this message. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to use curl, which is a command line tool to ping APIs endpoints, and it outputs the results. So I'm going to say HTTP localhost 5000 slash task and let's see and we have the response message task root working which is coming from here from our task endpoint so everything worked awesome okay, next let's design our database each task will have a title description status due date and a priority level let's ask chat gpt to create a mongo schema for this This schema perfectly matches our requirements. Let's save it in a models folder as task.js. Now let's build the crude endpoints for tasks where crude stands for create, read, update, and delete. These endpoints would be used by our front end later on to perform operations on the database using backend. We'll start with the create endpoint to add new tasks. Note until now we have been pasting prompts in new chat interface for clarity, but here we are relying on chat GPT memory or context of task database schema it just generated. If trying in a fresh chat GPT instance, you must copy paste the contents of task.js file to provide appropriate context of conversation to chat GPT along with necessary additional information. But since we have our ongoing conversation, I'm going to copy paste this prompt and let's see what happens. Well, there is an immediate problem that ChatGPT modified the original task.js file and added routes to the same file. This might work for a toy example project, but in any professional application, this is not acceptable. In fact, let's prompt it to separate routes into their own file. Let's copy it and create this route slash task routes.js file. In the same breath, let's ask it how to add it to our server.js file. Okay, do you see one issue with this? Uh, it is using a slash API route, which did not exist in our original server.js file. If you see here, we had forward slash tasks route configured in our server.js. And the reason is ChatGPT had no memory of server.js by this point, and it tried to regenerate the file for adding task routes. So we need to fix that. 
and we need to prompt it accordingly. So let me type. Okay, this is much better output. These are the key changes. So it imported the route slash task routes file that we just added. It is using it as, as a route for our forward slash tasks endpoint and removed the existing forward slash task example route because it got replaced with this one. So this is good. Let's copy this code. Go back, control A, control V, save. Right now, everything looks good. Uh, this looks fine in taskroutes.js. This looks great. And this is our task.js now, which is restored to its original state. So everything is uh, looking good, uh, good to try. So the endpoint that we defined in this task routes, uh, it is allowing us to add tasks to the database, right? So let's test it using Postman. In fact, let's also make this another change. So this was a placeholder. So let's make it task manager. Okay, so uh, before we go to Postman, note we left Postman as an optional installation. And this is just to show you how to use that to check that endpoint. The real test would be from front end though. If you did install Postman, this is how you try. So this is the Postman interface uh, from postman.com. This is the application and I'm going to make a post call. So I select post operation from here and this dropdown allows you to select which kind of operation you want to perform. Here we select HTTP localhost 5000 slash tasks. In body, I need to select raw and it should be JSON. Right, because we would be pasting a JSON object, which would be based off our task schema, database schema. Okay, let me type it. It would make sense. And in case you're wondering why am I typing these things, so we can go back to our task.js file. And this was the schema that we defined, which required a task to have a title description, status of these values, due date, and priority. So this is what I typed in there. One last thing, uh, in the header section, I'm going to say content type, and I'll select application slash JSON as the type. So let's send it and see if it works. In fact, uh, since we changed the database name, we need to restart the server, okay? And if I send it now, it worked. And we can see that it returned us the ID of the created task, created at, updated at, uh, all these fields. And that was returned to us as a response. Now let's quickly create the read endpoint to fetch all tasks as well. And that would confirm everything worked as expected. Okay, this is our updated taskroutes.js and let's paste it back. And this has a slight problem that it is adding slash tasks to it, which it should not because our server.js already had forward slash tasks defined. Okay, so good to go. Saved, restarting. Right, let's go to Postman and see if it works. So this time I'm going to do a get operation on tasks, which should return us all tasks. And yes, it returned us the only task that we had created so far. So everything worked as expected. Perfect. Let me just take a second here to show you how to do the same thing using curl command, which is a bit more complex, but uh, still doable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my post call and if I go to the body and make some changes here, I say my second task and this is my second task. I can leave everything as is, copy. 
I can make priority three though. Make a copy of it. Go to chat GPT. And I say, okay. All right, it would generate a curl command for you, which you can try. So let's give it a try. Let me go back to my Visual Studio, create a new command prompt and paste it. Okay, the command succeeded and you can see it returned a response with this ID, which means uh, the command was successful. Created it and update it are also included and we can very easily confirm everything. So if I say curl HTTP local host 5000 slash task, which is going to invoke our get command, we should see both of our, this is my first task, which we created using Postman. And this is my second task, which we created using the curl command above. Right, let's summarize what we achieved today. Set up the backend with Node.js and Express. Designed our MongoDB databases using Mongoose. Built and test API endpoints for creating and reading tasks. In addition, we also saw chat GPT assistance in troubleshooting some errors and also noticed in real time how we need to manage context and memory of AI model to get consistent expected results. In the next episode, we'll switch gears and focus on the front end. Chat GPT will help us set up React, build components, and connect them to our backend. See you in the next video.